Hey everybody, it's more Ferrari Swap 914 here at the Red Barn. In this episode, I do my best to finish up the rear pivoting link mount. I try a little bit of over, I try a little bit of under, not sure where we're gonna end up, but let's see how we do. Enjoy. Oh, and before we start, I forgot to mention a quick kitty update. Uh, Smash got adopted like two days after he got to be a free roamer. He was instantly snapped up. Punch was adopted by the vet who did his neuter. Uh, so he's going to go off to a super safe and awesome home with a veterinarian as his forever parent. Uh, Julep has, Mama Julep has uh, some interest and we're hoping, fingers crossed, that she gets adopted this coming weekend. And uh, Vesper and Toddy are doing great. They're wonderful kitties, so I'm sure it's just a matter of time before they're snapped up too. So quick kitty update. There you go. And now let's get back to the car stuff. Okay, before we get back to working on construction of the pivoting link mount, I've gotten a couple questions from folks asking a little bit or speculating a little bit on like what's going on with this pivoting link mount and how is it possible that the motor can move around, etc. And so uh, I, had, I had talked about this in an earlier episode and I always forget that not everybody watches every single second of these things and commits it to memory, all these different episodes. So let me go back a little bit and explain some thinking about this pivoting link mount. Uh, okay, first, I call it the pivoting link because it pivots here and it pivots here and it's a link. So pivoting link. I don't know what else to call it. Anyway, there's that. Then there's the main trans hanger mount. I call it the hanger mount. Rubber. And then there are the engine mounts. And the engine mounts are right down in there, just below the header. And... I don't remember what episode number it was, but there was, an, uh, there was an episode where I was working up the engine cradle and I had the mounts out and I had them on the bench and I was just showing you how I could push, you know, clamp the mount down and I can push on one, one side of it. And the rubber in that mount allows me to deflect that, the top of that mount, mount plate by a couple degrees. So that rubber is much softer than you might otherwise think. Uh, same with this rubber. When this was a part at one point I had a rod through here and you know, just messing around it and you could like move it around quite easily. That's pretty soft. I mean, it's nowhere near as, um, let's say inflexible as say like a poly mount for an LS or something like that. So what's going on here? Well, this is a flat plane crank and among other things, you know, RPMs, great stuff, better scavenging characteristics than a, than a cross plane. But, uh, they don't run as smooth. They have an inherent vibration that the cross-plane crank doesn't have. So it's really, it's about performance and less about, you know, smoothness. No surprise there. Um, but because of that, Ferrari, again, speculating, uh, used pretty soft mounts for this drivetrain to try to isolate the chassis from some of this engine vibration. And again, I'm saying that based on my experience playing with those mounts. They're pretty soft. So here's what I think. In the 360, there's a big beam that runs across the chassis just in front of that pivoting link mount and then has some tabs that reach back and grab a hold of it. What in the world is that thing doing? Well, if you want to Google Ferrari engine, uh, I don't even know. I had a video. I'll see if I can put a link in the description, uh, a link to one of these guys. He had a, a 360 with a broken engine mount and he did some videos of how much the motor was moving around, which was a lot when the motor mount was broken. And then he fixed it and he did a side-by-side -side and it still moves a lot more than I would have thought. I mean, it's pretty softly mounted. And so what I think is going on is those front motor mounts are designed to take the horizontal or excuse me, the, the vertical loads as the motor's torquing up under power and engine braking and pushing down. Um, but what I suspect is they're not designed to take any kind of shearing forces, that being the, the drivetrain moving backwards and forwards. And if you sort of look at the geometry and, and kind of what's possible when that thing's bolted down, the motor's essentially trying to pivot around this mount. Under torque, it's trying to lift up at the front. You know, under engine braking, it's trying to drop down at the front. And if you imagine that thing bolted down, what would happen to the motor when it was trying to move? Well, it could still move a little bit because that thing's pivoting on both ends, so it's not limiting it completely, 
but it's limiting the amount it could rotate because if it starts to rotate too much, that thing's going to try to push forward. And I suspect it's just trying to limit the back and forth movement to eliminate or re greatly reduce the shearing forces that may be applied to the engine mount. So that's what I think is going on. And I'm no engineer, but just in looking at all this, that's kind of what popped into my head when I thought, why did they put that mount there? And there's been a couple of guys who have said, ah, you don't need that mount, you know, just do without it. And it's like, maybe that's true. Maybe the only thing that it would do would potentially reduce the life of the engine mounts. But when a company like Ferrari and, you know, any OEM manufacturer for that matter, when they go to the trouble of putting something like that in their car, my opinion is they've got a darn good reason for it. They wouldn't just add that part and all the stuff that went into that part and the mount and the chassis and the whole thing um, if it wasn't necessary. So I'm not just going to leave it out. I'm going to put it back in there. And even if my guesses are wrong, I'm going to defer to Ferrari engineers over what I'm hearing on the internet <laughs> with all due respect to other smart people who may have a good point. So anyway, that's why I'm putting all this time into making something that can bolt that mount down at the front. And, uh, you know, like I said before, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay, we're back under here to, uh, to check out a couple of other things. One, Martin to the rescue again on a great idea. We're concerned about where this uh, heat shield might be able to fit. And he said, you know, what you ought to do is make a template of the negative space that's in there, or the space that's in there, so we can look at exactly how much we have to work with. So, I just made a little template that clears the X-pipe and is shaped the same as the transaxle. So this is how much room we have to put a heat shield in place. And if I put this back in here, and not that you're gonna be able to see it, but what it does do for me is I can mark where a gusset can start to get out of here. So if you think about what the hoop's gonna do, one thing to note is just like the previous model, I will do another brace in here to give me a much broader area, you know, a bunch more space, if you will, right? It'll be crossbarred like that. So I can bring a gusset from here down to that whole, you know, much larger area. So in all, this joint right here is going to be plenty strong. And then the same thing at the back. So now I've got something to work with and I got to go cut this crossbar and get it put in place. And then I will talk to you about how we're going to attach it back here because you think we are going to weld it to the crossbar, but that's not what's going to happen. All right, now I got to notch the additional crossbar <clears throat> for the hoop. And with that in place, we'll go ahead and cut it. <laughs> And here you can see that radial jaw. It just does this odd open around the center. Pretty cool tool. And then knock off the burrs. And that's gonna sit in there somewhere in this range. So now I just gotta measure up where to cut the other end of this and cut it. All right, uh, with that tube notched, it took a little bit of filing to get the fit I wanted. And now I've got it, you know, everything squared. So it's a nice right where I want it fit. And this just, again, you can see now once this is in here, it gives me a platform to tie that pivoting link mount to, or rather the, the brace, what am I thinking? Uh, the brace slash heat shield that gets up over the X pipe. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tack this together for right now. I do love this fixture table. It just makes things so easy. It's like cheating. All right, getting under there and fitting things. And what, uh, what's got to happen is I want this to be as, this piece to be as far centered or as close to centered as it can be. But the starters right here, and. What I realized was if I notched this 
crossbar, I can sneak this thing over where I want it. So I made up my little tongue depressor popsicle stick plate and just notched out, you know, a chunk of that tube right where the starter is going to be. But then this guy basically sneaks in here like this. It's a little bit tricky to fit because it's hitting the it part part of it hits the radius and part of it tries to sneak under here. And so let me see if I can if I can uh, knock this into place. Always use your vice grips as hammers. Uh, but there you go. And I'm going to get that tacked in there. And in all, that will provide clearance for the starter. All right, and then after just some final welding and a little uh, weld dressing, we've got a notched clearance for the starter hoop. So that worked out great. And uh, it, it actually is allowing this thing to tuck in even closer to center, which means this is going to be virtually invisible under the car, which is really one of the goals, is to not have to look at it at all. So that's, that's really good. And uh, now we'll start getting this thing fit onto the chassis. And I've got some adjustable jacks here holding the hoop in place where I want it. And it's going to really be difficult to show, but you can see the notch. Can you see? The notch for the starter is right there. Horrible filming, sorry. But what that allows is it allows for this, you know, this thing is dropped down at this angle so that it's the same level. It's a teeny bit above the X pipe, which provides plenty of clearance everywhere it needs clearance. Plenty of clearance over here, although it doesn't look like it because you can't see the notch from here. But now the real kicker is, and like you saw at the beginning of the video, if you want to watch for all this technical, you know, why we're doing what we're doing, you can watch at the end. So here's one of the clevises we're going to use. And, uh, you know, the big news here is, after all that work, no big deal, but good practice on the lathe and good practice welding. And we don't need that crossbar. I can just put the clevis in the end of the tube and put the other component, the blade, if you will, and it'll be reinforced. You'll see all that when we get to it. But this will just attach here and bolt on. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to work out. You can see it's too close. Uh, i got to shorten these tubes a little bit on both sides to get this thing where I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and work that up, and uh, we'll see you back on the fixture table. And there it is. Trim to length and nice and even on the fixture table. And now I gotta weld these things in. And what you can see is I'm just gonna do a little bevel on here just to make sure I can get down into the into a groove for the weld. And then I'll also drill a small hole and do a rosette weld and pick up that piece of it too, just to add a little bit more strength to that joint. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now to get the bung set, here you can see those plug weld holes, and that'll help secure those in there. And then I just got a couple of blocks, or uh, these 90s, to hold these things dead straight up and down, parallel with each other. And so I'm just going to go ahead and tack this on here, ahead, and then you know we'll uh, we'll play with fitment before final welding. Now under the car again, you can see the crossbar is gone, so we lost all that weight. And I'll do a 3 16 inch wide blade, which is the width of that clevis slot. And that'll just be welded onto the main engine crossbar here at the front. And then I'll have a very small plate that triangulates the top of it, at the very least, maybe on the bottom too. So this will be plenty strong, and it'll be able to go up and down, it'll clear that. So we'll have whatever adjustment we need back here to get heat shield up in here at the exact height we want it. I really don't think, after watching that video, I really don't think it's going to be that much of a problem. 
I don't think it moves very much back here as it turns out, although it does move a whole bunch at the front. But here's the good news, right? So yeah, you can see a little bit more on this side, but you know, there's a lot of mechanical stuff to distract you. And on this side, it tucks way closer to the starter. And it doesn't look, you know, that little bolt hanging out the back there could be trimmed if it needed to, but I don't think it's gonna, because remember the motor and, you know, the drivetrain's going up at the front. And if you watch that video, when he gets off the gas, it sort of settles back down to its normal position. It's not like it really bounces down very much. So I don't think we need much clearance underneath the transaxle and underneath things like that. I think it's really, we want to make sure that nothing lifts up into it. Okay, I got these little tabs made and I got the correct holes in them and they're shaped the same side to side and they fit right up against there. So now I have to uh, bevel the edges so I can get a good weld in there against this cross member. And that's approximately where this will sit. And you can see there's this much room at the back. I'm pushing it forward. Uh, so we got plenty of clearance there. And this uh, clevis setup allows the, the hoop to pivot up and down, which is what we want for adjustability of this heat shield. If this heat shield is a little too close, and I've got this little fakey fake piece in here just to kind of give me an idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these prepped and then get these tacked on and start working on the plate. Well, this is kind of cool. The tabs are tacked in and now this thing, the hoop, it tucks all the way up. I mean, it's well clear of the starter, well clear of everything under here. And well, it's not great. That's not that attractive to look at with this jack in place. This allows me to get this height adjusted to right where I want it, and there's the hoop. And now to go to work on the heat shield, get it tied in to this, and make sure it's nice and strong right here and right here, and we should be good to go on our fore aft locator. Then we gotta figure out the struts. All right, parts. This is gonna sit, this is my base of a heat shield. And I've got these gussets that I made up this morning. These were just freehand cut, and then I just, you know, once I figured out where the hole was, I just clamp them together, bolt them together, and then shape them so they come out symmetrical. But let me show you how this all fits together under the car. All right, now this takes me a second to figure out how to sneak this back in here, but this is, and I got a little just, I just clamped this little piece of steel here to hold it up at the front where I want it. And then at the back, there we go. All right, so that's how that's gonna work. And if you look at it, you can see now that that pivoting link mount with those gussets sneaking up around there and that's going to be plenty strong at the back and if you can see where it starts to drop at the front i don't know if i can hold the camera in here at the same time but if i do this and say if, if you can see where my fingers coming up through there i don't know if you can see that but i can get to almost right there with a gusset and then at the front pardon this plate this wall will tie to the front of the hoop and then a gusset going up the middle, as I mentioned, gussets coming down around the sides. This will be plated back here. And then from the top, you know, from the top of that plate back to this tube, you know, will be gusseted. So I think this is gonna be plenty strong. And remember, you know, all it's gotta do is support the fore and aft movement um, and not collapse. So I think I can, uh, I think I can get by with that. So I'm just gonna keep chipping away at this. was just making a gusset blank this is all way too big uh, but it lets me work with the piece so I'm not dealing with some you know if I was making that gusset it's just impossible and dangerous to you know work with something that small so 
I'll shape the inside now, but this is the band. This is the pivoting link bracket tree. And then this thing can sit in the middle here and I'll trim it so that it's as big as it can be. And it extends as far back in above the X pipe as is reached. And after all the trying to do the over one, I figured I'd give a go to doing an under one. And I just happened to be looking online at the ground clearance under a, uh, a Cayman, Porsche Cayman, and it's only like four and a half inches. So here I am all worried about ground clearance, and I've got more than that, <laughs> even if I do this. So I think I'm gonna try, this is so much easier, because I have all the room above for the heat shield, and I don't have to worry about anything hitting anything. Uh, we're pretty comfortable that the motor doesn't drop much under use. Um, this I can slot, by the way, so this whole thing can pivot down if it needs to have more clearance under it because the struts will be adjustable. Um, but this just seems so much simpler. And if you're looking at this saying, well, that's going to bend, unbend, I'm going to do like a little mini diffuser looking strake of gusset that's uh, going to run from back here and then just a little bit of a blade running down here. So it's not going to be a catching point. It'd be a uh, like a knife blade if it runs over something. But uh, this will get uh, tied in here and here. This will get boxed on the top. There'll be a gusset coming down in here and gussets on the bottom. So in all, this should be just fine from a back and forth uh, strength perspective. And this is just long because we don't know exactly how we're going to tie the struts in here. It may get a tube uh, located like back in this area because, again, it's still higher than the exhaust pipe you know a tube under here maybe we'll see but this is not done obviously just tacked together right now uh but i think we're going to go with the underneath because it's just so much simpler it also means i can take that whole assembly off without messing with the exhaust system so working on the car is a whole bunch easier uh, with the underneath one and so that's what we're going to go with uh i didn't cover a lot of the fab work on that because it's just a, a bit of boring band sawing and disc sanding and all that good stuff so I will say that it, the play, I'm stepping on all kinds of junk. The place, Martin was here earlier and he said, it looks like a bomb went off because there's just crap everywhere. So, uh, didn't quite finish it, but we have a design that we're going to move forward with. So that's going to do it for this episode. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Please leave a comment, leave a question, subscribe, share, do all that great stuff. And we will catch up with you soon. Everybody take care. Bye-bye. All right, I said this was too complicated to try to explain from under the car, but I wanted to give you a review of my current thinking about what we're going to do with this thing. And I don't want to overcomplicate it, but it is, it is interesting. So hopefully this will make sense. So here's kind, of, here's kind of the landscape, right? Engine and transmission, the mount. I'm not an artist. Give me a break. There's the pivoting link. Here's the X-pipe under the trans. And here's the crossbar that runs under the motor. And the hoop that you saw me make in the previous episode lives right here ish right there's the hoop notice it's not connected here for and that's for a good reason so here's what we're up to i was going to weld the hoop to the crossbar and then i thought well wait a second if we do the math on all this in it sort of i got to kind of work my way to it but here's the, here's the latest thinking the hoop is actually going to have a clevis end on it and there'll be a blade that comes off the crossbar and again, forget that it's out of plane and all that. But this will be able to move up and down. And the reason for that is we know there's going to be tabs on a mount that the pivoting link picks up. And in the ideal world, we have a heat shield that lives above the X-pipe under the transmission. Now forget that I'm not drawing gussets and strength and all that other stuff. We're just doing a stick drawing. But that plate slash heat shield is going to connect to the pivoting link this will be a hard connection whether it's welded or bolted in a significantly strong way and this will be strong enough to do what we want it to do but it'll come up over and it will bolt to the front of the pivoting link and there's more room to, under here than you might think so this will be strong enough right that it won't it won't collapse this way when this link is pushing on it right it'll be overbuilt so that it'll work but here's the cool thing this thing can pivot and since it, this can pivot back here and this can pivot here you'd say well, wait a second that's not going to work this thing can just 
you know, it can collapse, it can do all kinds of bad stuff. Right, but, and obviously this would be 3D'd off of the paper, but I'm just gonna draw a 2D version of it. There will be the strut that runs up to the chassis. And that will be a heim joint here and a heim joint here. And what that means is, instead of welding this in one place and having to worry about exactly where that heat shield is, because my only real concern, I know I can overbuild this and it looks really wonky now, but just give me a break. My only real concern here is, what if we guess wrong about this location and the motor moves a little more or less than we thought? I can't have this contacting anything. Because remember, the X-pipe and the drivetrain move as a unit and this thing can't move. This needs to stay in place. But what if it needed to be an eighth of an inch higher than we thought? Well, guess what? If I have heim joints here, I can just shorten the heim joint. And because this is a bladed, you know, slotted clevis, this whole unit will lift up and I can build more clearance in, you know, above the X pipe move it closer to the trans or the other way. If I needed to move it closer to the X pipe and farther away from the trans, that allows for that. And if you're worried about like, well, wait a second, if there's all these hinges, what's going on here? How does it stop this link from going forward? Well, again, imagine that this is plenty strong, which it would be. It can't collapse this way because again, it's pivoting here, but it's tied here and it's tied here. So this cannot go up and down. It can't collapse in terms of this folding this way and this allowing to go forward because the strut's gonna prevent it from moving up and down. And the strut isn't doing anything for back and forth, but it doesn't need to because this will. Because if you think about it, this whole contraption is triangulated through the chassis, right? The chassis is tied here. This is tied to the crossbar. It's tied to the chassis. So this point can't move. This point can't move. This can't go back and forth because this is stopping it. And this can't go up and down because this is stopping it. And we're building ourselves a little bit of a safety net with this heat shield location being able to be adjusted if it needed to be. So the, the epiphany yesterday was this doesn't need to weld to the crossbar. This needs to be able to be, you know, it could weld to the crossbar, it wouldn't really do anything, but the nice thing about this is, this unbolts, this can be unbolted, right? It, this can come off. Obviously the exhaust, in this example, the exhaust would likely have to be removed, but this is where I think we're going, is adjustable struts and a pivot at the front of the pivoting link mount. So that's the thinking.